today, Bob Denver stars in Castaways on Gilligan's Island. too well. And who's responsible for getting his lost ship wrecked? You know who that is, don't you? Of course, I did. Don't you remember? Gilligan, I'm telling you, if we don't find some fresh water pretty soon, being shipwrecked is going to be the least of our problems. What's the most? We'll all be dead. That's the most, all right. wave has wrecked all the underground springs. With this equipment we've got, we just can't seem to reach fresh water. But I'll have to keep on trying. Yeah, let me help you, Skipper, huh? Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> just as I expected. What? Whoa! <laughs> would you go drill your own well? Aye, aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen my coconut? Yes, Gilligan, it's right there. Oh, thanks. You know, Gilligan, and I have spent the last ten minutes trying to put these things together. You didn't do a very good job, did you? <laughs> Gilligan, you have an absolute knack for doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. No, sometimes I do the wrong thing at the right time or the right thing at the... You took the whole radio apart. That's right, I am trying to get it to work. Why don't you put it back together again? <laughs> Gilligan, these wires are corroded. The condensers are full of salt water and the solid state circuitry is cracked. Maybe that's why it doesn't work. <laughs> I, I, I do wish those turtles would lay rounder eggs. Perhaps they'd grow better if you hard-boiled them. <laughs> Capital idea, lovey. That way the yolks wouldn't slosh so much. <laughs> I just Mr. Not... Howell? <laughs> Gilligan. <laughs> That was a gimme. I fixed the radio! I fixed the radio! You did it! You did it! Storms are predicted throughout the area. Rain squalls are due by late afternoon. And here is the latest word on the search for the Minnow 2. This is the 12th day since the tiny craft was lost in a storm at sea. The Coast Guard announced they are abandoning their search. It must be presumed that all hands were lost. We now resume our scheduled program, Happy Talk. <laughs> Hi, 
The guy to land this plane sure must have been some pilot, huh? Well, Gilligan, this plane has been falling apart for the last 20 years, just like your brain. <laughs> uh, professor, uh, how did this airplane here, this ungainly thing, uh, and, and that aircraft over there, I explain to me, how, how did they get here? Yeah, and the machine shop, yeah. too. I've given that a lot of thought. Two disabled military aircraft, and a work shed with tools and drums of gasoline. I believe that indicates that there was probably an emergency landing strip on this island during the war, covered over through the years by the jungle. Listen, I got a great idea. Why don't we put the two planes together and make one, and then you can fly us out of here, Professor? Oh, Gilligan, that is the dumbest, the stupidest, the most ridiculous, lame brain idea you ever had. No, 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 no. hold on a second, Skipper. Maybe Gilligan's got something. And it's not dumb or stupid. How about ridiculous or lame brain? <laughs> no, no, listen, when I was back in the States, I saw a movie on television, The Flight of the Phoenix. Oh, I saw that too, Professor. That was a great movie. You see, these guys are flying the plane over the desert like this. All of a sudden, one engine on one side started coughing. <laughs> the other side started wheezing. <laughs> and then the wings started wobbling like this. And then they, they crashed right into the sand. And then there was sand everywhere. Sand, sand, sand. Water, water, water. Uh, get the dear boy some water. What is he prattling about? And one of the men in the movie figured out how to take various parts from a wrecked airplane and construct a plane that can fly. That's exactly what I meant. Professor, you mean it's your intention to build an aircraft from these two wrecks? Precisely. My good man, I'd sooner fly with wrong way Feldman. <laughs> hey, look what I found! <laughs> Of them all. Oh, that's only your Combining those two aircraft should make a plane that will fly. That's amazing, Professor. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Congratulations, Professor. You have the only computer in the world that uh, <laughs> gives milk. I don't know if this panel is strong enough for an airplane. I'm sure it doesn't go on the outside of the plane, it goes on the inside. Oh. Besides, if the professor says something will work, it'll work. I mean, it has an engineering degree, you know, even if it isn't aeronautical. He knows all about stresses and strains of material and about aerodynamics and the theory of flight. Oh, and don't forget those flying lessons. Are you trying to convince me? No, I'm trying to convince me. <laughs> now, Gilligan, would you spread that pole? Skipper, do you know what we're making? 
No, don't you? No, I thought you did. Well, I don't know. Well, who knows? Well, the professor, I guess, he drew the plan. Well, I'm glad somebody knows, because if nobody knew, we'd never know when we were finished. <laughs> Just a couple more feet. That's good. All right, hold it right there. Uh, oh, boy, that was hard work. I'm pooped. <laughs> okay, we're ready to start hoisting the wing into place. Now, Gilligan, you take that line and go as far as you can that way. Wait a minute. You expect me to lift this wing by myself? Well, it's based on the laws of physics. That pulley, used as a fulcrum, will enable you to lift four tons or more. Four tons? By myself? Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, Gilligan, here we go. Shouldn't we be helping in some way, Thurston? We are, lovey. We are. We are? Yes, they haven't the time, so we're resting for them. Oh, good. I'm so glad we're doing our share. <laughs> to us, darling. Who else? <laughs> Not yet. Keep going. I've got to stay here and help the skipper move the wing into place. Okay, Gilligan, you're ready to start lifting. Four tons. Feels more like 40 tons. everybody's part but we finally did it uh, exactly what have we done professor don't you remember the flight of the phoenix this looks more like the wreck of the hesperus it's obviously a no-frill flight i feel like i'm back in hollywood in a disaster movie oh, it's perfectly safe to me as long as it stays on the ground <laughs> professor straight from the shoulder do you really think this plane will get us to hawaii well i'm not sure so perhaps there's no reason for all of us to risk our lives if i go alone and i make it I can send back help. We can't let him risk his life to save ours, can we? Why not? <laughs> Professor, even if you get back to civilization, how can you send help? We don't even know where we are. That's true, Marianne. I think we should all go. I believe you all have a right to your own decision. Now, if you're going to go, raise your right hand. If you're going to stay, raise your left. You really must make a choice. I mean, where would you rather be? Now, really, you must make a choice. Professor, we've all been through a lot together. I, for one, say that we shouldn't separate now. Unfortunately, the batteries aboard both planes are dead, so I couldn't activate either one. Now, hopefully, you'll be able to create sufficient amperage to arc the condensers, bypassing the rheostat, so we can start the generators. You all understand? Yeah. yeah. Do you think if you arc to the rheostat, the uh, condenser will act? Never mind him, Professor. <laughs> Just get in the plane, and we'll get your engine started. Whatever that means.
get seated, prepare for takeoff. Roger. <laughs> How's it going? Well, I tried changing the fuel mixture. I've made it richer, and I've made it leaner. i tried changing the prop pitch, but I can't seem to eliminate the vibration and the structural damage. Oh, well, as long as there's nothing wrong. Gilligan, this is plenty wrong. Mm -hmm. Fighting to keep this plane in the air. i better tell the others. No, don't. You'll start a panic. No, I don't want you to say one word about this. Not one word. Believe me, I won't say one word. What's going on up forward, little buddy? Gilligan, do you know something that, that we don't know, Coco? Okay. You skipper? Oh, hope mine is custom made. <laughs> Come on, Skipper. Professor, Professor, how serious is it? Gilligan, you gave me your word. I didn't say one word, I swear it. All I did was give out the parachutes. They took a wild guess. Well, at the moment, there's no cause for alarm, Skipper. But there is now! Skipper, I'm going to have to feather number one. Now, with just one engine, we're not going to be able to maintain our altitude, so you're going to have to jettison everything that isn't nailed down. Uh, All right, Professor. Come on, here we go. Move toward that. With a capital T. And a capital R. And a capital O. No. <laughs> we've only got one engine, so we've got to jettison everything we can. Everything. Oh, no. Everything. Oh, no. Everything. Oh, no. Throw it out, Gilligan. That's it. Oh, no. Gilligan. Come 
Mr. Listen, what's going on? Did I see a parachute? It was Gilligan. He fell out. We gotta go back. Oh, no. Since you told me that, I had good news. With all the weight you jettisoned, the one engine has enough power to get us to civilization. But we have to go back and try and find him. We don't know that he's down in the water or whether he made it back to the island. We've gotta go back. You're right, of course. But I must tell all of you, this ends our chance of rescue. With only one engine, we'll never be able to take off again. Set her down, Professor. We've got to go back for my own money. me to buy you international airport. <laughs> come back to look for my little buddy, we'd have all been killed. You're right, Skipper. The way that engine was vibrating, it would have fallen off in midair. Coming back to look for Gilligan undoubtedly saved our lives. Oh, but we don't even know where he is, or even if he's alive. Well, let's get out of here and start looking for him. divide up and form search parties. Oh, goody. I love parties. Uh, no, 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 dear. He means we must search for Gilligan. Oh, well, of course. What would a party be without Gilligan? <laughs> well, he could be any place, even in the ocean. Let's look everywhere, high and low. Just look high. He's <laughs> Gilligan! Hi, uh, little buddy! Tagging him a tree! <laughs> Gilligan! Oh. Are you all right? Buddy. It's all my fault. It's all my fault. If I hadn't fallen out of the plane, the engine would have dropped off and we'd all be dead. Instead of looking forward to dying in three days when the water runs out. Oh, come, come, Gilligan. None of us is going to die. Now, let's be logical. Let's figure out our options. If we only had a boat. I have a boat. Yeah, but we don't. Whoa! I wish I had to see you, Captain. It's lucky for us that you happened to land here. Not luck at all. A plane was spotted on radar, and when the blip disappeared from the screen, we thought it had gone down. So we started an immediate rescue operation. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Hey, I have an announcement. To commemorate the many years that we have lived here, I have decided to design a living tribute on this very island. A living tribute? A tropical Shangri-La. And for this purpose, money is no object. <laughs> you said money is no object. Isn't this beautiful? <laughs> this building this hotel is the best idea you ever had. Except for marrying me. Oh, yes, yes. The castaways. A hotel with no telephone, no cars, no television, no electricity. Just the way we lived when we were shipwrecked on this island 15 years ago. And I was very generous, my dear. I made our fellow castaways partners on this island paradise. <laughs> Silent partners, of course. <laughs> Castaways. Now 
Please, folks, watch your step as I help you ashore. Here you are, good sir. Madam, please. Welcome ashore. Ah, oh, lovely. There you are, little lady. <laughs> Here you are, good sir. Welcome ashore, young fella. <laughs> Gilligan, get the mail sack. I'm the skipper around here, and if there's anything that I can do to make you more comfortable, just let me know. Well, my hammock's kind of saggy. Do you think we kind of... Mm -hmm. Gilligan, will you <laughs> cut that out? <laughs> Please register. Ah, welcome to the castaways. We are Mr. and Mrs. Thurston Howe, uh, your charming host. How do you do? I finally convinced Henry to take this vacation. To get him away from the meetings and the telephone and the pressures. Mm. I just hope while I'm away, my business doesn't go to rack and ruin. Rack and ruin? Isn't that the name of the law firm you use, darling? Uh, uh, no, lovey, dear. That's Mac and Reuben. <laughs> well, we've really been looking forward to a week at the castaways. No radios, no newspapers, no carpools. Gilligan. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I fall in the lagoon. Gilligan, get those fish off the counter. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Elliot will be in hut 24, and Dr. and Mrs. Larson will be in 19. Thank you, Gilligan. Mahalo, Nahidi. You Thank you. And now, folks, if you'll just step this way, Gilligan and I will bring you luggage. Well, come on. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, Skipper, Gilligan, when you get through with that, I'd like you to start decorating the luau area with these masks.